Why use actions? My favorite reason for using an action is when I have to do something more than once. Anytime that I'm sitting here in Photoshop or Elements and I'm repeating something that I did earlier that day or last week or last month, it's just one of my first thoughts is, what can I do to automate this so that I don't have to do this over and over again? So that's my favorite use of actions. But there are plenty of other reasons to use actions too. Um, saving time is a big one. Actions can do things quicker than we can by hand. It, for some reason, just the way Photoshop operates, it can do things quicker when they're in a series of steps than it can when it has to pause and wait for us to input something. So they can be really big time savers. They're also really awesome for things that you don't do very often. I know for me, sometimes when I do something like once or twice a year, I'm like, how did I do that again? And then I have to go poke around and figure out where that menu was and where's that thing hiding and I can't find it and I get frustrated. So instead, if I have an action that has been created that will do that for me, all I have to do is go right to the actions panel, find that one thing that I wanted to do and let elements do it for me. It's also really good for difficult tasks, things that you might personally struggle with. Having an action to do something that's a struggle can just make your scrapping time a whole lot more fun. And then boring or dreaded tasks. There are some things that people tell me all the time, I really hate doing extractions or I really hate doing drop shadows. Or for designers, I hear a lot, I really hate cutting those alphas out into individual letters. So actions are really perfect for those things that you just want to get done and get back to what you love to do. The number one thing that you need to know in Elements when you want to run an action is that you have to start with a document open. Whether or not we even use it, it just Elements will not run the action unless you have a document open. So we're just going to start making a 12 by 12 document here. It really can be any size. It doesn't matter what size it is. As long as you have something open, you'll be able to run the action. And so with the Scrap It action, if you expand the little icon over here, um, if you expand the icon on the folder, you can see that there's three actions in the set. And if you expand that, you can see the actual steps that are in the action. And so sometimes that helps if you run into a problem to know where you run into the problem um, so you can contact me to get help with it and I can help you work through that. You don't, you, you're not really able to change anything in here, but you can pick up where you left off. So that's how you get to that. So we're just going to press play and get started with the very first action. This is the play button right here. Most of my actions come with instructions. So this one starts out explaining that this action is going to help us create a layout. You will be prompted to open papers, photos, or elements. Just locate the file and double click. So let's press continue. And it also lets us know we will be able to resize as we go. When we see the control anchors show up, we can grab them, rotate, um, resize, do whatever we need to do to position things as we go. So we can get a little bit of a unique look to the layout. We're not locked into exact um, template that we start with. And then we need to press enter to resume the action. So I'll demonstrate all that as we go. Okay, so on the next screen, we are selecting a background paper. So press continue. And I am going to go into the download here, into the sampler kit, and this is by um, Rosie Posey. And then I am going to look for a paper. Now I'm in, since I'm on a Mac, this is the cover flow mode. This is list view right here, and you can see the difference. So when I'm in cover flow mode, I'm able to scroll down through all these things and see what I'm looking for. So I'm not sure how the equivalent works on a PC, but that's how it works on the Mac. So we're going to, let's select this paper here and just press enter. On the next screen, I'm told to press a pat or to choose a pattern paper, so press continue and I'm going to get that floral one that we saw. And if a style setting box pops up, this is usually for adding the drop shadow. So you can adjust your settings here if you want or just accept the default. 
And then we're going to pick one more paper. So I'm going to go down here and pick that third paper that's in the kit here and press OK. And then confirm that drop shadow. And then we're prompted here for a ribbon, beads, or string to put on top of the paper. So just press continue. And that's what I'm looking for now. So let's go with this long ribbon. And so now we're told that we can go ahead and resize it. So just press continue. And you'll see how these transform handles show up. So now I can grab and rotate if I want to. And I can move it around on the page and position it wherever I want it to be. I can also resize it if I want to and really have a lot of flexibility with that. So whenever it's in position where I want, I can either hit enter on the keyboard or I can click the green check mark. And now we're prompted for a frame. So I'm going to press continue and there's the frame we're going to use. So press open. And again, we have our drop shadow. And then we can resize this as well. So if I want, I can enlarge it here. And I'm all holding I'm holding in the option key. That's alt on a PC, and that allows me to resize from the center. If I let go of it, you'll see it's only resizing in one direction. But if I hold in that key, then I can resize it from the center. So I'm going to do that and press the green check mark. And then I'm prompted for the photo. So I'm going to press continue. And I'm going to go back down to my desktop here into my photos. And you'll see here, I can also pull this out of the way. Sometimes I want to see the shape of what's there on the screen. So I'm looking for a tall photo. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. This is our kitty mist. And now I'm prompted to resize. So let's grab that. And the idea here is to resize it to fit in the frame. Um, but sometimes you may want to go ahead and expand it beyond it. That's entirely up to you. But I'm going to put her in the frame right there. And now we're going to start working on a cluster that goes behind the photo and the frame. Leaves and ribbons work well. So I think we're going to go through four elements here. And I will mention, too, that with these Scrap It actions, they all come with a little printable list to let you know what's kind of coming up in order so that you don't have to always pay attention to the little messages. You can kind of be prepared for it. So um, I'm actually going to use this paint here. That's a really good element for being back behind things. And with paint, I really don't want a shadow, so I'm going to drag that down. OK, and then we're prompted to resize that. So you see I can rotate it. Let's do that. And press Enter. And we're going to grab another element. So let's see here. That's a good one for going behind things. OK, and let's, oops. The other good thing is the undo button still works, so <laughs> Commander Control Z. Um, I forget sometimes that with um, elements you don't have to hold the shift key in <laughs> to constrain it like you do in Photoshop. So all right, there we go. And let's get one more element. Let's see what else should we put back here. How about these little flowers? And this is kind of hidden back here, but as long as you click within those borders, you can go ahead and grab that to move it. All right, one more element. What else should we get? Let's see, how about that one? OK. And we're 
almost done here. We're getting to the end. Let's put that one up there. Oh, okay. So this one was looking for a tag. I already did the tag, so that's okay. We'll just do something else. Let's do this one instead. It's crazy that it's just like continue, continue. All you have to do is yeah. follow the steps. <laughs> yeah, you're just it's leading you right through making this layout. And Okay, so now I think now, it's it says it's a scrap it one. Do you have like then you have scrap it two, you know, you have a bunch of different yes. light Okay, gotcha. I do. Yeah, there's um right now I think I have 14 of them. Oh, wow. Um different layouts and then they're they're bundled into collections too so you'll see it even added at the very end t um, text here for mm -hmm. title and journaling which then i can go in and just edit and make them say whatever i want there we go and we get the message here that every the layout's complete and we can still move everything around and adjust it however we want to pretty cool right so if you want to check her out go to windesignscraps.com she does have a shop at O Scraps, so you would just go to shop for high quality digital crafting right here and that will lead you over to the wind design scraps O scraps and then you see this little icon here that are this little rollover here that says actions and then I believe you can just do, I think it was called um, Scrap It. So just type in Scrap It. And let's just see what it brings up. Actually, you know what? I don't think there needs to be a space in there. So let's check that out here. There we go. So here are all the different layouts that she has. Layout one was what she was working on. Let's kind of zoom in there so you can kind of see. Whoa, that's pretty close. <laughs> back out a little bit so here's that scrap it one action she's got uh, a couple other ones scrap it two three four and so on and so forth so you can see where that would save you a ton of time by doing these layouts so if you want to learn more about that go into 2017 and I believe it is under let's go into the website and into the members only area you would just go ahead and click into 2017. And she does have a couple different actions classes. So this one was the very basic one. And then you just go to use, install, and shop for actions where you can watch the rest of this class. And then if you notice in 2000, I believe it's in 2018. Yeah, it's uh, she did a class called Save Time with Wendy's Favorite Scrapping Actions. So check that out too if you want to get more familiar with actions. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye for now.